The content of this presentation applies to the version 4 release of design management. Hi, this is Wayne Dew, one of the developers of the design management product. In this presentation, I'm going to show you how to use validation in the design management application. I am going to start by importing a model of a simple reservation system. I do this by first going into the domains project, going into the import menu, and choosing eCore import. I click on the add link, followed by the browse button, and I select an eCore meta model file. I press the import button, and now I see that the eCore import completed successfully. I would like to make sure that I can see this model in the design management application, so I go into the designs menu followed by Explorer. Since this model has not yet been associated with a domain, it shows up in the Unassociated Ontologies folder. I'll click on the model to open it up, and now I will click on the Class Diagram tab. Here we can see the class diagram for the classes in this ontology. We can see that the system and user classes extend off the contact number object class. When I click on the property diagram tab, I can see the properties included in the diagram. Here, when we look at the contact number object class, we can see that it contains the property for a phone number. This property is inherited by the system and user. We would like to define some constraints for this model. First, we want the contact number to be in a certain format. Second, we want the maximum number of users to be in a certain range. Third, we want the name of the system to be in a certain format. Fourth, we want the custodian to not be an administrator. Fifth, we want to ensure that phone numbers for systems are unique. To add constraints to a model, from the designs menu, I will create a model constraint object which can be thought of as an element that contains a collection of individual constraints to constrain the values of instances of that reservation system. Some constraints make the most sense when they're applied on properties, like the one to validate the phone number property. These are called property constraints. We will add one right now. I will choose regular expression as the language. The message will be for severity. I will choose error. And the expression will be a regular expression. I will choose a property as a scope. Recall that the contact number property belongs to the contact number object, and therefore both the user and system classes. If I wanted to further restrict the constraint to either one of those classes, I would choose that class here by adding a class scope. For the live property, if we do not want the user to be able to save when invalid data is entered, we should check that checkbox. For the second constraint, I will specify that the maximum number of users 
must be in a certain range. So I will choose the range constraint language. For the property, I will choose the maximum number of users. For the third constraint, we want the names to be in a certain format. We can best do this by providing content assist to suggest valid names to the user based on what the user has typed. We will add some JavaScript for this. Before we copy and paste the JavaScript into the expression box, I would like to explain what the JavaScript is doing. Note that there are two special variables here, value and current value. Current value is what the user has entered, and value is an array of possible values to suggest to the user. And for the property, we will choose the name property. This presentation will be continued in part two, where we will learn how to create class constraints.